Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner, and this is my last video of 2021. If you've been around since this thing launched in 2009, thank you for being here. If this is your first video, hey, thanks for watching. Stick around. I'm going to show you how I mixed a song that I recorded with just a microphone, me and my acoustic guitar, single microphone. Uh, now, it is a Christmas song, and I know it is a few days after Christmas, but I think this is still worth it because I'm just going to show you my thought process and my approach for getting a pretty surprisingly cool mix given that I only recorded with one microphone. So the microphone that I use, in case you're wondering, is this Roswell Mini K47. I believe these sell for like 400 bucks, and they sound, I would put this up against any mic I've used, and I've used a lot of fancy mics, including one that I know is like $5,000. Anyway, great sounding microphone. Honestly, this Persona's PX1 sounds pretty great too, and it's $130. So anyway, don't feel like you need super expensive microphones to get good recordings. I've said that a thousand times. So the way that this worked is as a part of my VIP membership, our challenge for this month was to record a holiday song. Could be an original, could be a full production, could be whatever. And I was in that kind of a mood where I just wanted to sit here with my guitar and a bunch of reverb with headphones on and just play and see what comes out. So that's exactly what I did. I got headphones on. I plugged this plugged this microphone in. I had it sitting in front of me probably about right here. Um, pointed maybe right at my, my collarbone. And I'm sitting here like this with my guitar. Uh, and the guitar was that Gibson J45 over there. And I just began to play. It was in an open dadgad tuning and sing, but I was listening to everything on headphones. So one thing I've said in the past, if you're going to record a live performance, or one thing I've done in the past is whether I'm using one microphone or multiple, I'll set up the mics, I'll take off my headphones once I've got all the levels and everything, and I'll just perform like a real singer, like performing a little uh, house show kind of thing, like an actual performance. Um, but what I find is I, I personally am not good about balancing myself with my guitar. I'll usually play a lot louder than I sing, depending on the song. Um, but by having a combination of one microphone, but also having my headphones on and hearing exactly the relationship between my voice and the guitar, I was able to balance myself, like literally put my face in the right spot to get the right vocal level um, so that it was loud enough against the guitar. Because a lot of times I'll do a single mic thing, and when I listen back, the guitar's too loud, the vocal's too quiet, and there's not much you can do to fix that, right? Um, so making sure that I was monitoring it, as in listening to the signal while recording, as simple and dumb as that sounds, made a big difference. I also just slapped a crap load of reverb as I was recording it, because that was the kind of mood I was in, and that reverb made it into the final version as well. Uh, so let's go in and let me play for you the raw track. Before I show you the mix, uh, let you hear what the raw recording sounded like. Because when you think of a single mic on guitar and vocals, at least for me, I tend to think, meh, neither is going to sound great. The guitar isn't going to sound perfect because the mic has to be up high enough to capture the vocal, but the vocal's not going to sound great because it has to be far enough away to capture the guitar, so it's going to be kind of a, neither one is very good, but at least you captured a live performance. That's where my head is, um, and this kind of proved that wrong, and I'm very pleasantly surprised, um, especially, I almost feel like I got, at least for this kind of low-key, soft ballad type song. I almost feel like I got better results with this one mic than I would with multiple mics. Um, that's to be seen. But let me hit play, let you hear a little bit of this Christmas carol, and then I'll show you what I did on the mix. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly sing The vocal is forward like you want it to be in a recording, but the guitar is still full and big. Probably because I have terrible posture and I'm like hunched over like this, so neither is very far from the microphone. But whatever the case may be, um, 
that feels great. I could almost feel like I could just release that by itself. But as I said, I recorded it with a ton of reverb, so I ended up adding a ton of reverb. So here is my session, as you can imagine. It's very small. And let me turn all the plugins back on. Don't need that tuner right now. So it's very simple. A couple of things, parts to this. There is a, on the track itself, there is a fat channel, which includes this uh, tube CB compressor, which I really like. It's a cool vibey tube compressor, but it has an adjustable attack and release settings, which is helpful. Um, so I like to go on something like this, a little bit slower on the attack so it doesn't feel super squished. Um, and then EQ wise, just a little bit of cutting out at 360. Uh, and I probably, I didn't use a high pass on this, a little boost at 8K and a little boost at the, the high shelf. Following that is an EQ. That's where I did my high, my high pass rolling off the excessive extra low end and took out a little extra boominess at 161. I'll show you what that sounds like in just a second. And then there's multiband dynamics here, which is just acting as a de -esser. So if I turn off, I'm not, I'll show you the reverb in a second. That's kind of the last piece of the puzzle. But um, for this track, let's start with the raw track and I'll give you, I'll, we'll start with the fat channel and I'll actually give you each piece first. So here's the raw track to refresh. Let's go over here where it's got a little louder. So that compressor, it, it added a good bit of volume, which I don't care as much because it's just a one track mix. Um, but it's mainly hitting that guitar when it goes boom, 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 boom. It gives it a little more rhythm. So it's really more affecting the guitar. The guitar's triggering it more than anything, but it still hits the vocal too. Shepherds, why this jubilee? So it's almost like the guitar is acting like a gate on the vocal. Just tightens things up a little bit, especially when I play louder, like here. Echo back so when I go boom, boom, and I play that dynamic thing, the compressor kind of smashes that down. So the overall volume between everything stays about the same. And then EQ wise, uh, looks like there was a little bit of annoying frequency at 360. And then a little boost at 7K. At this point, it's feeling good. It's bright enough on the guitar and the vocal. Uh, but the vocal is, is cut. there's a little bit of woofiness on the guitar and the vocal's a little sibilant. So let's first deal with that woofiness. Here I did a high pass filter at 50 hertz and then a low mid cut at 160. So both my vocal and the guitar kind of resonate around that 160. Foo, foo, foo. So I just brought that down a little bit, combine that with the low cut filter, and we get this. I want to make sure you hear this one. I'm going to bypass it a couple times so you can hear the difference that just this little two movie cue is making. Why your joyous strains prolong? Say what may the tidings be which inspire your heavenly song? Guitar is still full. We still have those lower frequencies. We just brought them down a little bit to tame things out. And then finally, the vocal is feeling a little too sibilant. So sometimes for de -ing on a track, I'll use multiband. With just two bands, the bottom band is doing nothing. The top band above, what is it above? Like 3K is just listening to these frequencies and turning them down. So it's mostly the vocal that comes through there. So that makes the vocal sound a lot less sibilant when I sing words like shepherds. Shepherds, why this, shepherds, why this and you know the de is working well if when I sing vowel sounds, the, the air of the vocal is nice and crispy, but then when I sing an SH or a T or, a, or an S or something like that, those sib sibilant sounds aren't louder than they need to be. So you get a nice air in the vocal from that boost we did with the EQ that caused there to be too much sibilance. This de is bringing that back down. Shepherds, why this 
you hear this kind of wispy top end air across my vocal, but without the de things like the J in Jubilee, Sh in Shepherds would be too loud. Shepherds, why this that S on this was really piercing. The de is going to catch that. All right, so that's it for the vocal tone. Then I kind of went nuts with my quote, quote unquote signature plate reverb that I love. So it's just a room reverb that's set to the plate mode with a big, this one has a three, almost four second tail to it. The big secret with reverb is to EQ it. This time I removed a lot of low end and did some extra cutting at 200 hertz and rolled off some top end so I didn't have this sibilant bright reverb. I wanted a dark, moody reverb. Then I spread it out with a widener and I even put a phaser in front of it. I'm not sure if we even hear that in the mix, but here's what it sounds like when I add the reverb in. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains Listen to what this reverb sounds like without the EQ that I put on it. Tightens it up, gets rid of that woo 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 down there that would just make our mix sound muddy and left us with just a nice, beautiful reverb sound. Shepherds, why this and arguably, I could maybe make that reverb a little louder. It was too loud when I recorded it, and I didn't want it to be drowning in reverb, but that's a big, huge reverb. So typically for me, the bigger the reverb, the less of it I want. The smaller the reverb, the more level of the reverb I want. So a big reverb, I don't need much there to give it the effect that I want. Small reverb can have more. General rule of thumb, I, I, you can break those rules. And the final piece of the puzzle is the uh, FabFilter Pro L2, which is one of the few third-party plugins I own. It's adding 8 dB to get it up to a decent level for mastering. And here's what the final version sounds like. Shepherds, why this so there you go. If you had asked me to choose, you said, hey, Joe, would you rather record a guitar vocal with one mic or two or more if for a song you have to release? And I would say, well, I want two or more because I want the control of being able to EQ and maybe even compress each track separately. And while that's good and can be great, I think I would have honestly discredited this as not having the same quality as two microphones, and I am decidedly not in that camp anymore. Um, if anything, this makes me want to do this method more for even bigger productions. Record the guitar and vocal at the same time, back myself into a corner that way, and then build on the rest of the tracks around it. I may never do that, but I'm intrigued by the idea. This felt musical, this felt fun, this felt like a nice change from producing everything out with tons of tracks and tons of different parts to just a guy and his guitar and a big honking reverb. A lot of cool stuff can happen. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for being a subscriber. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. I've got a lot of fun things planned for next year. In the meantime, hope you have a wonderful new year. I'll see you in the next one.